Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And today we're talking Bitcoin recovery. Of all of the video tutorials that I have out and of all the questions I get asked, by far the most popular topic is lost Bitcoin recovery. There are many scenarios in which users of cryptocurrencies can find that they have misplaced or permanently lost their crypto. And I wanted to put together a video tutorial with a sort of flowchart explaining different scenarios you can find uh, yourself in with lost cryptocurrency and what the possible solutions or lack of a solution uh, there is with this problem. So first, we need to go over a little bit of terminology for this flowchart. So I'm going to label uh, scenarios in which your funds are permanently lost as FL, funds lost. And I'm going to label scenarios in which there may be a technical possibility of recovery as FNL for funds not lost. So the first question to ask yourself if you've misplaced your Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency is, is the transaction that I sent to that wallet actually confirmed yet or not? When you send out a crypto transaction, your wallet should give you a transaction ID that you can look up on a block explorer. So you can go to a website like block, uh, blockchain.info, uh, blockcipher, bitcoin.com, depending on the cryptocurrency that you're using, and actually see the status of that transaction on the network. All crypto transactions are public by nature, since this is a decentralized network, and so you can see whether or not your transaction has any confirmations. If your transaction is not confirmed yet, and you're concerned because it's been a while since you sent the transaction, or the receiving party hasn't uh, maybe released your goods yet, or something like that, uh, there's generally good news in this case. Uh, this is provided that the address that you sent to is correct. So, if you have a transaction that hasn't confirmed yet, you simply need to wait in, in reality. Um, I know patience is hard sometimes when you're talking about maybe a large sum of money that you sent off or something like that, but especially with the Bitcoin network, when the network gets, uh, gets congested, it sometimes takes days to weeks for transactions to fully confirm. So one possible scenario is you simply wait and eventually the transaction will confirm. Uh, maybe you're on the Bitcoin network and you set too low of a fee and so miners are taking higher fee transactions in front of you. In this case, your funds are not lost. Uh, you just simply have to wait longer than you might have hoped to wait. Another scenario is that if you really set too low of a fee and the Bitcoin network is going through a period of high congestion, uh, your transaction may be eventually dropped from the mempool, which is the list of pending transactions. In that case, your funds are also not lost. What will happen in that case is that your funds will simply end up back in the wallet that you sent from because the transaction to send to another address just will never complete. There's nothing you have to do in either of those scenarios. You simply have to be patient. Another possible option for certain Bitcoin BTC wallets only is the option to use opt-in replace by fee. I'm not going to go into depth in what this means and how it works, but some wallets will allow you to rebroadcast a Bitcoin transaction with a higher fee so it can get in faster. And in that scenario as well, your funds are not lost. Now let's talk about if you have a confirmed transaction, but you're not seeing the money show up in the other wallet that you're hoping uh, it would get to. So the first question you have to ask yourself is, whose address did I send to? The first scenario is, I sent to an address that is my wallet, but it belongs to an exchange, or I sent to somebody else's wallet, perhaps by accident. Uh, so one really common example I see with this is people that accidentally send Bitcoin Cash or another Bitcoin fork to a Bitcoin BTC address. In either case, if it, the address belongs to an exchange 
or the address belongs to, say, a friend or a merchant, it's out of your hands at this point. You have to ask them for help. So these, that would be the only individual that has access to the private keys needed to recover those funds. Uh, so some examples of exchanges that I commonly get asked about are Cash App, which only supports BTC, Coinbase, uh, any other exchange where they don't give you private keys, and say you accidentally send Bitcoin Cash to your Bitcoin address. Uh, if they can help you, great, your funds are not lost. But I have to say, unfortunately, in most major cases, they are not going to help you. Cash App is notorious for this. If you send Bitcoin Cash to a Cash App address, they won't help you. And unfortunately, your funds are lost permanently. You're just going to have to cut the loss and uh, use it as a learning lesson for next time. Now, what if it's an address that is your wallet? and it's a wallet that you have a seed recovery phrase for. So it's a wallet that gives you a 12 to 24 word backup phrase, uh, or maybe it's even a classic wallet that has like a wallet.dat with your private keys in it. This scenario is a little different. So in one case, you have to ask, did I accidentally send to the wrong currency? Again, this is a really common scenario that I get asked about. For most people, it's sending Bitcoin cash to Bitcoin BTC addresses. In that case, another question you have to ask is, is this a SegWit or segregated witness address? In that case, it's an address that starts with BC1 or an address that starts with three. And in most cases, it should be an address that starts with three because that's the only way that a Bitcoin Cash Wallet would allow you to send to that address. Unfortunately, Bitcoin Cash is not compatible with SegWit addresses. It only even allows you to send to those three addresses because uh, those addresses can also be used for multi-signature. And in this case, your funds are unfortunately permanently lost. Now, if you send to the wrong currency, but it's a legacy address starting with A1, there is definitely hope in this scenario. In this case, you would need to follow some technical recovery steps that I've outlined in previous tutorial videos. In this case, if you get here, so you have a wallet, you've sent to a wallet that you do have a seed phrase or private keys for, but it's the wrong currency starting with a one address, you can generally recover in that case. Of course, I'm not going to go into the technical steps here, but you can see my videos on wrong address woes, what happens when you send BCH to BTC, or how to recover BCH sent to a Bitcoin address. Those two tutorial videos are available on my channel, and there's also articles as well on the Chain Tutorials website. If you find yourself in this scenario and you're stuck, you can also reach out to me via the contact form on my website. In certain cases, I am technically able to help, and I will do so for a small fee for my time. Now, the, another scenario that you may find, and this is the final scenario we're going to go over, is yes, I did send to my address in my wallet with a seed phrase, it's the correct currency, and I'm just not seeing the money show up. Again, the first step that you want to look at in the first place is even see if the transaction's confirmed. It's possible that some wallets may take a while to show non-confirmed incoming transactions. If you do see that it's a confirmed transaction but the money's not showing up in your wallet, uh, you may have to do a couple different things. The first thing is you may just need to resynchronize the blockchain. So every wallet gets its information about what the balance of that wallet is by looking at the public blockchain, which is a distributed decentralized ledger of all the transactions on that crypto network. Sometimes your wallet is simply out of sync. Maybe it's disconnected from the internet or it hasn't synced the blockchain in a while. And so the wallet just doesn't know about the new money that's come in yet. The money is still yours, you still own it. It just hasn't actually been displayed as yours in the wallet. It's like when you send off money to the bank uh, through an ACH transfer and it maybe takes a couple days to show up. The money's not gone, but your bank isn't crediting it to your account yet. If you're not sure how to do that or you're still not sure what's going on and, and you're pretty sure that you have the right address, you may need to contact your wallet's support team. 
So there may be some technical implementation details that you don't know about that they can help you with in order for that money to show up in your wallet. So this is definitely not a comprehensive list of all the scenarios that you can go through, but this is a flowchart about some of the most common scenarios that you might find yourself in. I do get asked these questions a lot, and it's unfortunate in cases where funds are permanently lost and there's nothing that anybody can do about them. So I'm gonna end with a couple of important reminders when it comes to using cryptocurrencies. Remember, cryptocurrency transactions, whether it's Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, or really any major cryptocurrency, transactions are irreversible by design. These networks were designed such that when you send money off to somebody else, there's no way for you to do a chargeback or anything like you could with a credit card. The money becomes permanently theirs. Whether that address belongs to an exchange, someone else, whatever, when you send a transaction out to the network and it gets confirmed, that transaction is final. That said, you need to always double, triple check that the address that you're sending to is the correct one. Make sure it belongs to the correct person, the correct cryptocurrency, and just double, triple check it by hand so that uh, no malware or human error can cause you to send your money off to the wrong place. Once it's sent, it's sent. Also, be wary of scammers. I have to filter all of the YouTube comments that come into my channel. And the reason for that is every single day, I get mostly spam comments from people claiming to be recovery experts and hackers on Instagram and WhatsApp and this, that, and the other that can get your money back. In a lot of cases, these people are claiming they can get your money back in scenarios where it is absolutely not technically possible to do so. All they want to do is get personal information so that they can steal more money from you. And I don't want to see you lose more money when you're already in a bad situation. So if you see somebody out there in YouTube or somewhere else that's doing business through Instagram or WhatsApp claiming that they're a Bitcoin hacking expert, don't believe them. They're trying to prey on people that are in a desperate situation. In a lot of cases, like I've outlined here, you may just have to cut your losses even if it hurts. So be careful out there, be smart with your crypto, double, triple check what you're doing, and if you find yourself in a tough scenario like this, be sure to consult this flowchart or reach out to an expert for help. I'm always here to help. I want people to learn about crypto and have a good experience with it, so feel free to reach out to me in the comments or through my website if you need help. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you learned something new with me today.